Hello everyone and welcome to Georgetown Women's Basketball. I'm your host Mike Baker. On this edition of Hoya Highlights, we'll take a look at February Big East play, talk to head coach Patrick Knapp and to the players. The Hoyas entered February poised to make a difference with impressive wins over Providence and Syracuse and disappointing losses against Connecticut and Boston College. It was clear the Hoyas had made some progress, but there were still some things to work on. I do believe that if we are shooting better, okay, we have more than a fighting chance. We've played good basketball games this year. People are going to collapse on Becky Moore. People are going to stick to Mary. Other people... Other people need to step up. Uh, goals for February, I only have one goal right now, and that's, that's to beat Seton Hall. we got a lot of work to do the next two days. From top to bottom, the Big East may be the best women's basketball conference in the country, something Coach Knapp does not dispute. Well, I think that our RPI nationally, Mike, when you talk about the strength of the Big East conference, is three or four right now. I don't understand who's one or two. I really don't. Uh, maybe they're, they're looking at the Pac-10. The SEC is usually one. It's not the ACC, I'll tell you that. Uh, I was looking at standings today, and then the ACC right now today would get three teams in. I think the Big East would get six, and that's what we're shooting for. So uh, it's still one of the strongest conferences in the country. I think it will bear out. UConn is a Final Four pick for me. I think a sleeper team to go deep in the tournament. I think you have to take two teams, and one of them would be Boston College. The other would be Rutgers. So the Big East will, will show well in the NCAA tournament. With as many as six teams in the Big East Conference getting an NCAA bid, what will it take for Georgetown to be among the Elite Six? Yeah, I think the Big East will get six. I've heard some things that our RPI as a league is still fourth best in the country. Uh, I, I think when it's all said and done, the top five or six teams in this league are going to win out. What they don't want is they don't want us, but we can. They don't want, Villanova doesn't want to lose to us and then get in trouble. Virginia Tech, Rutgers, they don't want to lose to us and get in trouble. Miami doesn't want to lose to us and get in trouble, okay? What we have to do is beat a couple of those teams, get them in trouble, and raise our RPI. Also looming on the horizon is the Big East Tournament. Last year, the Hoyas bowed out in the first round to Miami. So what does Coach Knapp think it will take this year to not only make the tournament, but to get a good seed? The Big East Tournament right now, we are probably one game out of sixth place. And if we could get sixth, that's a good seed. That would be a good seed at this juncture. It's going to be difficult to catch... UConn, BC, Virginia Tech, Rutgers at this juncture, um, Villanova at this juncture. They really have to collapse. Uh, can we go 10 and 6? Yes. But right now, you know, a very, very realistic uh, seed is 6 at this point. One of the highlights of the February campaign was Rebecca Brunson's 1,000th point. Considering she's only a junior and missed significant minutes during her sophomore campaign with an ankle injury, that's quite an achievement. I know, it means a lot. Um, I'm glad that I got it this year. It gives me a lot of games and a lot of chances to get up there with some of the higher ranked people in Big East history. Hopefully get up there, you know, maybe top five scores or something like that. But it feels good, you know. I go out every game and try to work hard and try to score for my team. And it feels good to get a little reward like that. I mean, it may be a small little ball, but... It does mean a lot. It means that I work hard, and it means that it's appreciated. Uh, it's, it's great for any player, uh, Mike, but Becky uh, clearly is one of the top players in the Big East. And uh, I think before she leaves, uh, she will break Chris Whitfield's record. I think, uh, God willing, she stays healthy. Becky Brunson will be our all-time main scorer and rebounder. And the way it's going this year, shot block. I don't know where her shot block totals are for two and a half seasons, but she's really getting after a lot of shots this year. I, I like that part of her defense. There were other positives in February. Freshman Carmen Bruce's improved play for one. She led all Hoya scores on at least three different occasions. This, of course, comes as no surprise to head coach Pat Knapp. Now, I always thought Carmen could score for us and would be a very good rebounder and is a strong player. She can improve her ball handling and must do that. Uh, and she must uh, always continue to play better defense. Sometimes Carmen runs into screens, and she doesn't need to. But overall, I think the difference from last year's team to this year's team 
is that our wings can score, okay? And you've seen in some big games here, Sarah James and Carmen Bruce get double figures. Carmen, too, is feeling comfortable with her offense, working on her defense, and enjoying life at Georgetown. Um, I think I feel a lot more comfortable than um, the previous games, or the beginning of the season. And um, it's nice to have, you know, teammates who are there to support you. You know, you can always have them as a shoulder, you know, if they ever need to listen to you. So I think it's, men it's mental, a lot of it, just to take my time and not rush things and just, you know, kind of relax. It also comes as no surprise that Mary Lisicki is leading the Big East with three three-pointers a game and is second in the Big East in percentage with 43.7% from outside the arc. Um, well, I worked on it on, in the summer, um, just making sure that I make more of my shots. I mean, I take a lot of threes, but shooting only 40%, it's kind of not, it's good, but I think I could shoot better. So, you know, taking better shots. Um, and then my teammates would screen well and get me open. Um, but lately I've kind of been fading away in my shots and not going straight up and I've having trouble. So um, tonight it worked well. I had a couple of threes, um, just going straight up and they all went in. Another plus is the return of guard Sarah Jenkins. She was out the first part of February with injury but has returned. Something Coach Knapp feels has been good for the whole team. I think Sarah Jenkins, what she adds is some fire. There were a couple games we played in this, in this stretch where there's nobody pumping people up on the floor or playing aggressively, you know, with, with like a jet spurt, just boom, getting out there, and Sarah does that. Uh, we missed her against Pitt very, very much because of their guard play, and we didn't have that extra speedster to throw in there. So very happy to have Sarah back, and her jump shot always helps us. As a sophomore transfer from the University of Maryland, Sarah Jenkins had to sit out last season. Now having recuperated from a back injury, she realizes how much she loves the game and how much she can contribute to this team. Sitting out is a very difficult thing. I know um, it bothered me because I sat out previously last year. I had to sit out the whole year, so I was kind of frustrated being as though I had to sit out again and I just got, I was just able to start playing. Um, and it's hard to sit out when you know you're a contributor and you know you're contributing contribute to winning and things like that. So it was a difficult thing, but I'm slowly, gradually coming back, you know, getting back into the flow of things. So I'm just waiting to be able to go full tilt. With Sarah out, Coach Knapp entered February with a new starting lineup, one that was to stress effort on the defensive side of the ball. That lineup can change. Yeah, Zuzana Horvath and Shantice Charles have been inserted. One reason Sarah Jenkins went down with the back, another reason we thought Knock needed to work on her defense. But now Knock is coming off the bench and giving us more minutes and some pretty good minutes. So we have a three-post rotation. Today against, um, today against West Virginia, Tia Jackson came in to four spot and gave us some good minutes and some tough rebounds. So uh, we're happy for the contributions. Um, there's really no difference, me coming off the bench, me starting. I just want to go in there and play as hard as I can. So, um, I've been working on my shot. I haven't been shooting um, as much as I, I would like to, but every time I get the, the ball, I just like to square up and, and shoot. Well, I didn't really mean too much, you know what I mean? I guess Coach Neff wanted to try a new lineup, but, you know, we keep playing hard, so I don't think it matters who starts. Well, the coach's usual instruction to me is just catch the ball and shoot, so <laughs> I've been trying to do that. <laughs> With Sarah Jenkins suffering from back problems and two new starting lineup changes, the Georgetown Hoyas faced the Virginia Cavaliers on January 26th. The Cavaliers had lost to number one Duke by only one and were 6-0 and on Super Bowl Sunday. This posed a clear challenge for Georgetown. Yeah, University of Virginia, uh, I don't know whether they're 6-10 and 10 or 7-10 and 10 or whatever they might be right now or 6-9. and nine. Uh, a very talented team. Their guards, uh, Blue and Graham, are very quick. We're going to have to control their penetration and make sure they don't get into us defensively like the BC guards did. I, I think that post-wise, if we don't give them good position, we can hold our own. So again, it's going to be, are we going to execute offensively? I think that's a big key for us right now.
Playing the third opponent in a row, appearing or receiving votes in the top 25 polls, Georgetown traveled to Charlottesville Sunday, January 26th, to face the Virginia Cavaliers. It was Super Bowl Sunday, and University Hall was rocking. Over 4,000 enthusiastic fans turn out to root for the Cavaliers. In characteristic fashion, the Hoyas got the tip off, and Mary Lissicki was on fire from the outset. UVA got an inside look early as Anna Crosswhite hit Jocelyn Logan Friend. Becky Brunson showed her fine-tuned jumper, and the Hoyas were up 4-2. to two. The Cavaliers persisted inside as Brandy Teamer found daylight, while Shuzana Horvath, starting for the first time in her career, tested her outside shot. Mary Lisicki continued her two-for-two two streak from outside the arc, while UVA tested their own three ball. The Hoyas' Carmen Bruce showed some good D, but Cavalier Reserve Sharice Graham got a pair, and Virginia took an 18-15 lead with 11.01 left in the first half. After the timeout, Becky Brunson jump-started the Hoyas with a splendid move on Mary's dish. Becky continued to take matters in her own hands with two more in the box. Virginia's Sharice Graham worked some double-O magic of her own on the pull-up, but Becky answered back with a definitive no on the rejection and the steal. UVA then countered with a deuce on the fast break, while the Hoyas' Carmen Bruce hit the jumper and made the score Virginia 30, Georgetown 26, with 21 seconds to go in the half. As the second half opened, Carmen got active in the offense again with a nice dish to Becky inside. Then it was Mary Lisicki to Shantese Charles, back to Mary in the corner for a tray. Susanna Horvath got the Hoyas' next points on the jumper, which put Georgetown within one, 36-35 with 15.42 left to go in the second period. Shantese Charles then took advantage of an open look from the corner and moments later got an easy break underneath and the Hoyas were on top, 39-38. To the Cavs showed some impressive passing skills on their next deuce, and the lead changed hands again. Virginia then swung the lead to three with a give and go with 7.58 left. Carmen Bruce hit Shuzana for a pair, and Mary Lisicki launched a three. A loose ball and change, and the Hoyas were all even again. Nocduani got a two coming off the bench, and the Hoyas were down 59-53 with 3.50 left in the game. Unfortunately, all the falling action was Virginia's as they went on to win 69 to 57. Uh, at Virginia, Mike, we uh, I felt had a good pace during the course of the game. Uh, did some good things offensively. Kept Virginia in front of us, and uh, you know, essentially we're up one with. 11 minutes to go, down four with 6.48 to go. But then we let some people behind us. And, uh, you know, they, 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 the lead zoomed from four to 10, and we had a hard time catching up because of their quickness. But I thought we had a good pace and some good execution for the most part for 34 minutes. Uh, we were not going to uh, hold that team back very long. We had the answer. If they scored, we had the answer. And a couple of our key players, Becky and Mary, had tough shooting days down there, but they play hard all the time. And uh, the judge didn't go in down at UVA. There were some positives from the UVA game. Rebecca Brunson led all Hoyas with 19 points and 14 rebounds to earn her 10th double-double of the season. Mary Lisicki followed with 14 points, and Shuzana Horvath, in her first start of the season, was 5 of 8 from the field for a total of 11 points. The Hoyas would return home January 29th to face the Pitt Panthers. Though the Panthers were 1-5 and five in the Big East, Coach Knapp felt they had speed and strong post play. Well, I, I think that Pittsburgh uh, brings to the table right now uh, Mandy Wittenmeyer, number 50, plays very, very aggressively in the post. They'll look there. But number 42 is going to try and blow by Elaine Selwyn. And the other thing that they have is they do have a number of guards come off the bench and shoot the ball well. So we got to slide our feet, get our hand up, and, and we have to play them aggressively. Uh, we can't back off of them. We have to stay on their guards. But uh, we need to be wary of their inside people, particularly number 50, Wittenmeyer. In a pivotal Big East matchup, the Georgetown Hoyas return to McDonough Gymnasium January 29th to face the Pitt Panthers. 
Shizano Horvath, a Panther killer in the past, averaging 16.7 points against Pitt for her career, was getting her first Hoya start. Mary Lasicki continued her reign of three balls, averaging nearly three hits a game. Co-captain Shantese Charles and freshman Carmen Bruce were also getting the call. And with her 10th double-double of the season, Rebecca Brunson continued to post some impressive numbers in the Big East, averaging 18.4 points per game. The Hoyas got the tip-off, but it was Pitt who drew the first three. The Hoyas' Shantese Charles then hit Mary in the low post but Dallas Williams ripped it with a pair. Susanna Horvath showed some great D early on, and Nakduani used the board from 10. Moments later, Rebecca Brunson got the block and pulled down her first of nine boards. Pitt continued to hit from well outside the arc as Lane Selwyn launched the long ball. Nakduani then managed all net and camped underneath moments later for two more. Becky also got a swat at the other end of the court and in transition used the board from five. The Hoyas narrowed the pit lead to 18-11 with 11.46 left in the first half, forcing Pitt to call an early timeout. In the next possession, good D was the order of the court. Becky then hit from 10 and Carmen demonstrated some good defensive effort. Pitt's Lane Selwyn continued the barrage from outside and with 7.49 left in the half, Pitt was up 23 to 13. Mary Lisicki narrowed the lead to eight with a nice two off the pick, but Lane Selwyn was relentless. It was Mary again from three, and Mary to Becky in the paint, but the half ended with Pitt up 44 to 22. In the second half, Becky got the foot board and put back, and Hoya pressure forced an early Pitt timeout. Susanna Horvath stepped up her defense as well, and later pulled up from seven. Lane Selwyn sliced inside and Brooke Stewart hit the tray and the Panthers were up 64 to 35. The Hoyas got some late inside penetration, then some outside shooting from Susanna Horvath and a little light down the middle, plus a pair of buckets from Nari Bergen. That got the Hoyas within 18. A final three point barrage by Mary Lisicki, first one, then two, then three, then four, wasn't enough to offset a pit victory, 91 to 72. 51% pit shooting would be difficult for any team to overcome. The Hoyas did have some bright spots, however, most notable being Mary Lisicki, who garnered six field goals from three-point range and a career-high 27 points to lead all scores. It was back on the road February 1st as the Georgetown Hoyas beat the Seton Hall Pirates 56-53. Rebecca Brunson had 14 points and 11 rebounds to post her 11th double-double of the season, and Mary Lisicki also had 14 points in the game. Senior Nakduani proved to be a force on both sides of the ball, tying a career high with three blocks while scoring eight points. She also hit the two free throws to give the Hoyas their final points. The Hoyas continued their two-game road trip against Notre Dame on February 5th. The Hoyas were down by only three at the half, but went on to lose 74 to 49. Three Hoyas scored in double figures, led by Carmen Bruce and her 14 points. Rebecca Brunson tallied 12 points, added 12 rebounds for her 12th double-double of the season, while Mary Lisicki rounded out the scoring with 10 points and 6 assists. Also, freshman guard Leslie Tyberski had a career-high night on the glass, recording 11 rebounds, 9 on the offensive side of the ball. Saturday, February 8th, saw the Hoyas return to McDonough Gymnasium to play the West Virginia Mountaineers. The Mountaineers were 1-7 and seven in the Big East Conference and 12-7 and seven overall. A team coach Knapp felt could be very competitive. Well, our game plan, Mike, getting ready for West Virginia is to shut out Kate Bolger, their high-scoring guard, and I think that we have to be very attentive to the inside post players. Williams, Carter, Holbrook, um, and the rest of them. We really have to get around in front, scrap for the ball, slide our feet. There's really going to be a battle inside against West Virginia, and we must stay on number 42, Bolger. Sporting identical overall records, the Hoyas look to rebound from their 74-49 loss to Notre Dame. 
The Hoyas' Rebecca Brunson had scored in double digits in all but one game this season, and Shantese Charles would have the dubious task of guarding the Big East best three-point percentage shooter, Kate Bulger. The Hoyas won their 11th tip-off in as many home games and exhibited some early defensive prowess with Shuzana Horvath taking the lead. Becky Brunson flashed some D of her own, and moments later, Carmen Bruce pulled up for a pair. Mary Lasicki got the Hoyas next points with some nice action in the paint, and Carmen hit her second bucket on a Mary dish. West Virginia's Michelle Carter got the Nears first points with 14-11 left in the first half. Then Becky hit a long two, forcing West Virginia to call a timeout, with the Hoyas up 13-3. A pair of threes by West Virginia's Sherelle Soho closed it to 13 to 9. But Sarah Jenkins in the game immediately made her presence known with a pair underneath and moments later hit from 10 to push the Hoya lead to 18 to 10 with 10.29 left in the first half. The Hoya's Nakduani also got the jumper and Mary hit her moments later under the net. The Hoya lead mounted as Carmen lofted one from the corner and Mary Lisicki got her first points from outside. Santia Jackson entering the game managed a nice steal underneath and was the beneficiary of a nice bounce from Becky Brunson. West Virginia hung tough and got a pair on the fast break to narrow it to 34-31 at the half. In the second half, Carmen Bruce got the Hoyas first points on a Shizana Horvath pick. Mary then hit the tray on a screen from outside the key. Shizana showed some stellar defense and played the deuce moments later. The Hoya League grew to 52 to 44 with a Sarah three-pointer. Knock then found the open lane and Carmen Bruce had the athletic move on the putback. Next, Mary got the lob on an inbounds play with time running out. A long two by Sarah made it 63 to 48 Hoyas. It was then trays by Mary Lisicki and Sarah Jenkins that pushed the Hoya lead and the final to 78 to 58. Okay, West Virginia. Well, today, Mike, what happened was uh, Kate Bolger was over four, had no points. Um, and their top post player, Michelle Carter, went one for seven. So our defense held up. The other thing that went very, very well was that I thought we ran our offense with its best efficiency in the second half. We went and got the places screened and got people the ball where we needed to get them the ball. The third thing was I think Mary Lasicki got off the snide a little bit, went three for six in the second half from threes. So that was big for us. And next up for the Hoyas were the Virginia Tech Hokies on February 12th, a team that was 17 and five overall and eight and three in Big East play. Despite trailing by only 11 points with nine minutes remaining, the Hoyas went on to lose 78 to 46. Rebecca Brunson led all Hoyas with 13 points. Mary Lisicki netted nine points, as did Shuzana Horvath. 51% Hokie shooting and three players lost to foul trouble were difficult to overcome in the Tech loss. Next up for the Hoyas, February 15th, they'd return home to play the Orange Women of Syracuse, a team they had beaten earlier in the year. Coach Knapp felt this would be a tough one, given the fact that the Orange Women had taken the Hoyas to overtime earlier. Well, you got to play Rochelle Coleman, number 22. You got to contain Julie McBride, 13. These two kids can really stroke it. They get to the basket on you. They shoot the jumper. The zone wasn't working for us. They got too many shots. Uh, you got to keep number two, Shannon Perry, from driving and keep her off the board. So that's the focus when you're going to play Syracuse. Exactly one month ago, Georgetown defeated Syracuse 82 to 75 in overtime. This was a pivotal matchup between Big E squads separated by a single conference win. The Hoyas got the tip off and on their fourth endeavor from the field netted their first pair. Mary Lasicki got the cross court theft and Carmen Bruce hit from three to make it Syracuse seven, Hoyas five. The Orange women's Shannon Perry drew the next two for Syracuse while Rebecca Brunson got the offensive board and brought it out for the seven iron. Shusana Horvath hit the jumper to make it 11-9 Syracuse and notched another to tie it at 11 all. The Hoyas' first lead came on a long two by Becky Brunson. 
Moments later, she ratcheted up the Hoya D with a deflection and a theft. Mary then took the Hoya's next possession herself, and Georgetown took a 20-19 lead with 8-16 left in the first half. The lead changed hands again, but it was Nakduani who made it 24-23 Georgetown. Then Becky continued her solid defense on the other end of the court, and Mary hit the two after some nifty ball handling. The half ended 28-27 on a sweet downtown shot from Sarah Jenkins. In the second half, Becky Brunson's turnaround jumper kick-started things for the Hoyas, while Carmen Bruce's tray made it 32-27 with 18.40 to go. The three ball would reign supreme for the next 10 minutes as Becky kicked it outside to Sarah. Carmen parked a tray, and Sarah launched yet another three to push the Hoya lead to nine. In the closing minutes, Shuzana Horvath's deuce on a Becky fastball, Carmen Bruce's three, Horvath's putback, and four for four free throw shooting by Becky and Mary iced it for the Hoyas, 70 to 66. Great win for three reasons. Mary Lasicki knows she didn't handle the ball as well as she could today. She's playing on a bum ankle. She stepped up and hit four big free throws at the end of the game. Becky Brunson hit big free throws in the last two minutes of the game as well, getting open, going after uh, second shots, you know, would, would under a minute to play. She got that one offensive rebound and got clobbered, and we were ready to lose the ball. Sarah Jenkins, I thought, did a great job defensively. Wednesday, February 19th, it was time to travel again. This time it would be the 18-4 and four Villanova Wildcats, a team that loves to shoot the threes. The Hoyas lost to Villanova 51-37 to despite being ahead at the half 23-21. Nakduani led all Hoya scores with 10 points and 4 of 7 from the field. Rebecca Brunson's 9 points marked just the second time all season she's been held under double figures. The Hoyas face the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers here at home this weekend, and the challenge gets even bigger as number one Connecticut comes to town on February 26th. We'll have coverage of these two games and the Big East Tournament when we see you next time, March 16th at 1 p.m., right here on PAX TV.